James Webb shows us that the universe could be twice as old as previously thought. The evidence is staggering, and new theories show that we have made a crucial miscalculation so far. The universe is not 13.8 billion years old at all. It is 26.7 billion years old, or even older. The knowledge about the true age of the universe has basically always been there, but no one gave the correct theories the attention they deserved. The James Webb Space Telescope has been causing a stir ever since it went into operation. Scientists have been thrilled and shocked ever since. Old theories are suddenly being swept off the table, and new truths are coming to light. With its unprecedented observations of high redshift galaxies, this telescope has given us insights into the youth of the universe that were previously impossible. In the process, scientists have discovered a remarkable problem. The existence of galaxies that are far more massive and evolved than our current models of cosmology and galaxy formation would allow. These observations contradict the currently accepted Lambda CDM model that describes the expansion of the universe. The latest findings are clear indications that we have completely misunderstood something. It's possible that our knowledge of the fundamental forces and processes in the universe is nowhere near as mature and advanced as we thought. Science needs to rethink and is facing a revolution of the century. Against the backdrop of fascinating discoveries, a completely new physics is emerging that will not only revolutionize our view of the universe, but also change the very foundations of physics itself. At the center of this new science is the long-ignored work of Swiss astronomer Fritz Zwicky, a completely new model for the true age of the universe and the phenomenon of the angular expansion of galaxies. A Journey Through the Young Universe to understand the groundbreaking work of people like Fritz Wicke and the new models, we must first turn to conventional cosmology. Did you know what a feat of astrophysics it was to reconstruct the origin of the universe from numbers and observations? Everything seemed so coherent that these assumptions were long believed to be true. The Big Bang marked the beginning of the universe as we had previously imagined it. This event was the moment when the universe began to expand and cool from a single and extremely hot dense point. The Big Bang laid the foundation for everything that would follow, from the most elementary particles to the mightiest galaxies. In the first moments after the Big Bang, the simplest elements, such as hydrogen and helium, were created through processes such as nucleosynthesis. After the Big Bang, the universe entered the Dark Ages, a period of several hundred million years during which there were no light sources. Slowly, the universe continued to cool down and the first structures formed under the influence of gravity. Although there were no stars and galaxies, this was a crucial era for the formation of the basic building blocks of matter and the cosmic structures that we can still observe today. The era of hydrogen reionization is thought to have begun about 400 million years after the Big Bang and lasted until about 100 billion years after the Big Bang. During this time, the first stars and galaxies are said to have formed, whose intense radiation had enough energy to ionize the neutral hydrogen in the intergalactic medium. This process ended the Dark Ages, when the universe became more transparent and light could travel greater distances. However, according to the latest findings, these brightly shining and highly structured galaxies already exist in precisely this epoch. Surprisingly, the analyses of the light revealed that these galaxies do not only contain very large stars of the first generation, the composition points more to a colorful mixture of stars of different ages. These galaxies had been in existence for at least several hundred million years when they emitted this light. Scientists previously even assumed that it takes more than a few billion years for galaxies of this type to form. But the catch with the previous standard model of cosmology is that, according to the old calculations, the Big Bang was only a few hundred million years ago at that time. This gives rise to three scenarios. The Big Bang took place much earlier, and the universe is much older than 13 point billion years. Or, stars and galaxies formed much faster than previously thought. Or, the third variant says that we are seeing galaxies here that may have come from a predecessor universe or a universe that exists alongside ours. Let's take a look at how researchers have previously imagined the formation of the first galaxies. Galaxy formation supposedly coincided with the beginning of hydrogen reionization and continued as matter in the universe came together under the influence of gravity to form larger and larger structures. 
These early galaxies are said to have been very small, had high star formation rates that filled the universe with light and energy, and are thought to have contained very different elements to today's advanced galaxies. In the previous standard cosmological model, the Quasar Epoch was a time that peaked around 2 to 3 billion years after the Big Bang. Quasars are extremely luminous cores of galaxies that are powered by supermassive black holes that devoured matter. Due to their immense energy and luminosity, they were the brightest objects in the still young universe, and they are said to have played a decisive role in the further reionization and heating of the intergalactic medium. But now comes the next bombshell. In addition to the impossible galaxies, James Webb also discovered six presumably very old black holes, which also existed only a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. The Quasar Epoch has therefore obviously been wrongly assessed, at least in terms of its dating. According to previous considerations, helium reionization took place about two to three billion years after the Big Bang and after hydrogen reionization and, according to scientists' previous ideas, was triggered by the intense ultraviolet radiation of the very first massive stars and quasars. During this time, the previously neutral helium in the universe is said to have been converted into ionized forms. This process is said to have heralded a further phase of warming transparency. The fascinating thing about this previous model of the development of our universe is that it was somehow coherent, it made sense, and the doubts were few and far between. But James Webb showed the scientists who had long believed in this theory something completely different. The dawn of a new physics. It's true, the Lambda CDM model is no longer tenable, certainly not as far as the age of the universe is concerned. Perhaps certain parts of this history of the universe can be true if we shift them in time. Recent observations and the need for new answers are now opening the doors to a new era of physics that will reshape our understanding of cosmic history. First, let's look at possibly the biggest source of error for astronomers, redshift and the phenomenon of angular expansions of galaxies. Astronomers have observed unexpectedly large angular expansions in galaxies at higher redshifts. These observations suggest that galaxies may have evolved earlier and faster than predicted by the current cosmological Lambda CDM model. To understand the angular expansion of galaxies, you can imagine holding a pencil right in front of your eyes. The pencil appears to be a certain size. If you move the pen further away, it appears to get smaller, although the actual size of the pen remains unchanged. The apparent reduction in size of the pen is an example of angular dilation. It is a measure of how large or small an object appears depending on its distance. The principle works similarly for galaxies in space. A galaxy at a great distance appears smaller than one that is closer to us, even though both may actually be similar in size. The angular expansion, therefore, gives us an indication of how large a galaxy appears in the sky, not how large it actually is. Now to the phenomenon of angular expansion in galaxies and why it's so important now. In astronomy, you would expect that as an object, like a galaxy, gets further and further away, its angular extent gets smaller and smaller. And this is true, but only up to a certain point. At a certain redshift, a measure of distance based on the shift of light to longer wavelengths, we observe an unexpected turning point. Instead of continuing to decrease, the angular size of galaxies begins to increase again. This phenomenon indicates that the universe has certain properties in its expansion that do not correspond to our previous models. It could show that the expansion of the universe is not uniform, but has behaved differently in different epochs. It will be particularly interesting if the observed increase in angular expansion occurs at very high redshifts, suggesting that the universe may have expanded differently in the past than we have explained so far with our current cosmological models. Tired light changes all the old calculations. This is where the Swiss astronomer Fritz Zwicky comes into play, who was doing research at around the same time as George Lemaitre and Edwin Hubble. Lemaitre and Hubble are considered the fathers of the Big Bang theory, but Zwicky was certain that Hubble at least made a crucial mistake when he observed distant galaxies. Fritz Zwicky was born in 1898, grew up in Switzerland, and later conducted research in the USA and elsewhere. Zwicky shone with his sharp mind, but also caused controversy with his often controversial theories. 
One of his remarkable ideas is the tired light hypothesis, which he presented in the 1920s and which is now becoming topical again. Zwicky speculated that the redshift of light from distant galaxies need not necessarily be evidence of the expansion of the universe, but could instead be explained by the loss of energy of light over large distances. The idea that the redshift of distant galaxies proves expansion was largely introduced to the world by Edwin Hubble. Although Hubble was almost able to prove his ideas, there were discrepancies that could now come back to haunt him. Hubble's tension showed anything but consistent results. Zwicky's theory, on the other hand, explains the phenomena of very distant galaxies without these tensions. Zwicky can no longer personally enjoy the late triumph that may now be dawning, but a researcher of modern times could now become a star in the scientific firmament. The Indian-born researcher from Canada, Rajendra Gupta, combined Zwicky's model of tired light with the varying coupling constants. This led Gupta to an exciting assessment of the age of the universe. Gupta's theory states that fundamental constants such as the speed of light, Planck's constant, and the gravitational constant have not been uniform over time, but have undergone important variations. This entirely new and dynamic view of fundamental constants could explain the observed anomalies in the angular expansion of galaxies and the discrepancies in the current cosmological model. Gupta's work now opens up a fascinating new perspective, and if it proves to be true, our universe is far more complex and variable than previously thought. Gupta's new calculations of the age of our universe arrive at an age of at least 26.7 billion years. Subscribe to the channel now and stay tuned for all new videos.